compound interest or compounded growth. The idea of growth upon growth, multiplying itself. Let me explain what I mean. Side so one of the people I wanted to go visit with was a man named uh, Burton Malkiel. Bert Malkiel, or Bert, is an amazing professor who's at Princeton, and I wanted to go see him because he wrote a book that's become kind of an investing classic called A Random Walk Down Wall Street, and he wrote it in the 70s, and it's still popular today, and in it, he kind of shook up the investment field because he came up with this idea saying, you know what? People should be able to have a tiny bit of money and own all of the stock market and not pay these huge mutual fund fees that are usually hidden, that are eating away at your ability to grow and compound what you have into real wealth. It's a gentleman who started Vanguard, and that's Jack Bogle. He took this idea, and he bet his fortune on it. Both of these men understood something. Tell me, what's the single biggest mistake that individuals make, that investors make in their life? And he said, Tony, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is they don't take full advantage of the power of compounding. He said, Einstein said it was one of the single greatest inventions of humanity. Understanding it can change everything in your life, and everybody says they understand it, he told me, but very few people tap it. He said, understanding something intellectually is not the same as doing it. If you're doing it, then you know it. If you understand intellectually, you know, like I've said before, that and $3 will almost buy a Starbucks bucket of coffee. So what you really have to understand is how it works. His riff was to tell me the story about William and James. He said, let me just give you a real example. Let's say two guys, William and James, and let's say William starts out at 20 years old, and he starts taking a little bit of his money and just locking it down and setting it aside and investing it. Let's say he takes $300 a month, $4,000 a year, and he puts that aside and he doesn't touch it and he puts it in the stock market, and let's say over time he averages 10%, and let's say he does it in an index fund so he's not being taxed continuously, so it grows tax-free until the time he's gonna take it out. And let's say he makes that investment, stay with me now, William makes that investment from the time he's 20 puts away that 300 bucks a month, that 4,000 a year, till the time he's 40, he never makes another investment again. That's it. And then we see what he has at age 65. And then on the other hand, he has a brother named James. And James, he doesn't get started when he's 20, he doesn't get started when he's 30, he waits till he's 40, and then he starts to say, God, I better start doing something. So he does the exact same thing his brother did. He starts putting away $300 a month, $4,000 a year roughly, he gets the same exact return, let's say of 10% in a tax protected environment. And at 65, from 40 to 65 is 25 years. So he spends 25 years putting money in the system. Think of it, four grand times 25 years is $100,000. His brother, William, he only did this for 20 years, 20 to 40, 20 years, times 4,000, 80,000. So the second brother, William and James, James put in significantly more money into the system done it longer, but at age 65, they both got the same rate of return, who do you think is doing better off? I know you know the answer, but the real question is, how much better off? And that's what most people have no clue of. William, who started earlier and quit earlier, has 600% more money. Not 20%, not 50%, not 600% more money. At age 65, both these men who got the same rates of return, but one started earlier and quit earlier, he has $2.5 million for William. And James, who started later and put more money into the system, but he started later, so he got less compounding, he ended up with $400,000, a $2.1 million difference. Now that could be a difference between total financial freedom for somebody, or doing okay for a while, and at 70 having to get a job to be a, you know, somebody greeting people at Walmart. See, this understanding of compounding is how you can free yourself from this idea that somehow you've got to make this giant score. Because the more you try to create that giant score, even if you get it, usually isn't kept.